Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Global Fleet Virtual Conference 2020. I hope that you enjoyed the conference so far, and I am sure that you will enjoy it even more after this session called Connectivity as Key Enabler in the New Normal. This virtual panel discussion is supported by our diamond sponsor, Octo. As you all know, the fleet and mobility industry is in full revolution. Indeed, with aggregated data being a key enabler for both innovation and fleet and mobility management optimization. The current pandemic emphasizes the need for reliable and transparent data. And going into the new normal, the trend towards more connectivity will only gain traction as it delivers efficiencies in terms of safety, cost and sustainable mobility. Indeed, this crisis shows that connectivity is vital for our society and for our industry. And to unravel how you can unlock the benefits of connectivity for your global fleet management, we have invited three top experts. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome Mr. Nicola Veratelli, CEO of Octo Group, the world-class leader in insurance, IoT and much more. Mr. Brandon Nixon, CEO of Litix, one of the fastest growing video telematics technology companies. And finally, Neil Koss, CEO of Geotap, the global leader in vehicle telematics and IoT connectivity. Gentlemen, welcome. It's great that you are joining our conference. I know that you have really busy schedules, so I also know that it's really great that you can share your insights with our global fleet community. For this first round, we would like to keep it simple. In fact, you have one minute, not more, to detail your company and your business. So you have to be short and brief. Let's start with Nicola Viratelli of Octo. Nicola. Can you let us know in one minute what your company is about? Sure, Stephen. Thanks for having us. Uh, so, three numbers for Octo. 18 years old of age, 6 million vehicles connected, and 270 billion miles worth of data makes Octo the world's largest telematics and data analytics service provider for the auto insurance industry and provides fleet management innovative solutions such as uh, keyless rental, vehicle diagnostic, damage detection and reconstruction, and services like uh, real-time traffic and environmental condition monitoring. And this makes Octo one of the main players in offering smart tech solutions, connecting the world of mobility through advanced analytics and IoT-driven services uh, for what I call the new era of smart telematics. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicola. Will be definitely interesting to hear what you have to say about trends around connectivity. And also thank you for the support in uh, arranging this session around connectivity. Next is Brandon Nixon of Litix. Brandon, uh, what is your company's core business? Can you tell us in one minute? Yeah, thank you, Stephen. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, Lytix is the global leader in video telematics. We're based in the United States. We use the power of machine vision and artificial intelligence to improve the safety and productivity of our clients. There are thousands of people on this earth because our technology helped our clients prevent the collision that they would have gotten into, and we've helped save billions of dollars for our clients. Very good. So your company is definitely looking into the future if you are in artificial intelligence and video telematics. The third company that we have with us today is Geotap. Neil Call, CEO of Geotap. Uh, many of our um, participants in the conference probably know your company, but for those that don't, can you fill us in on Geotap, Neil? Sure. Uh, thanks for having me, Stephen. Um, so Geotab is a global leader 
in commercial kinematics. We have more than 2 million connected vehicles. Um, in 2020, our revenue is expected to be $400 million. We have 1,300 employees in 120 countries where we have devices. Um, our big customers are companies like AT&T, New York City, State of California, Boeing. Uh, our belief is around the ecosystem, uh, which is we have a big marketplace for selling solutions that work with telematics and big data, uh, where the data sets are used by universities and smart cities um, all over the world. So that's really in a bit of a snapshot what our company is. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's clear, ladies and gentlemen, that we are living a remarkable situation. A situation in which reliable data are paramount for health and sanitary reasons, but also for social and economic purposes. So let's discuss with our three experts the importance of connected services post-COVID-19. And I would like to start again with Nicola. Nicola, how do you see the uptake and the growth for connectivity in fleet and mobility management evolve in the new normal, so when we come out of the crisis. Yeah, thanks, Stephen, again. So clearly, the new normal needs connectivity. This is something that is going to be paramount in the future. Just think about the way that Octo acted over the last few months in terms of developing something that is very much focused on, on how connectivity can help uh, the so-called new normal life. We developed three products mainly that are very much focused on those specific. The first one is a, is a technology that allows and uh, enable the so-called safe uh, interpersonal distancing in order to make sure that people will always maintain this kind of distance that is in this new world uh, becomes fundamental in order to avoid the spread of the virus. The second one that is very much uh, vehicles related and fleet related is a system that allows for the sanitization, automated sanitization of the vehicle via the POC technology, which is a nanotechnology developed by an ASA. Everything is automated triggered by our Octo uh, box. Uh, I'm not gonna enter into the technicalities, but allows for an automated sanitization of the vehicle whether it is a car sharing, whether it is a car rental company, customers are going to be able to be alerted by an automatic message in their app, and they will be able to enter into a sanitized vehicle. In a world where we all know that using public transportation becomes a little bit more concerning, we will allow the mobility via the vehicles by the use of the technology. And on top of that, last but not least, we are going to trigger the so-called touchless rental experience via keyless solution of Octo that is going to be able to allow everyone not to interface and not to have any touch and being able still to do the car sharing and the car rental all over the world. Okay, thank you. Um, we'd like to continue with Brandon. Brandon, you said yourself that Litex is the leader in video telematics technology. Now, um, I can imagine that video telematics can also play a role if we look at the sanitary environment in which we will work, in which we will live, in which we will, let's say, move and travel. So for you, the question, how does telematics and how, uh, sorry, how can video telematics help to ensure compliance with safety and health regulations? Yeah. It's, it's interesting. So I absolutely agree with Nicola that, that connectivity to the vehicles is going to be a must. It's not going to be optional in the future because it's just having the visibility into what's going on in the vehicles as they move around the world is paramount. And what happened with COVID-19, segments of the, of the economy were shut down immediately and other segments of the economy really improved dramatically. And, you know, if you look at telematics or video telematics, we were able to see in real time what was happening to the economy. For instance, we could see our school bus industry really getting shut down quickly. They went from, you know, X in revenue literally overnight to zero. We could, on the other hand, you could see the last mile portion of the economy accelerating like crazy. And so they had to keep up with the demand. And then the industries like waste industries and uh, you know food distribution to the grocery stores, they did as they expected. 
Um, the other thing that we saw, which we, I found really interesting, is that when the, the traffic went down because of COVID-19, everybody working from home, we started to see the risk on our roadways completely shift. And it shifted from frequency of collisions and, and, and things that happen normally on the roadways to the severity of collision, collisions went up dramatically. And it was because the roads were less congested, which we can see using the machine vision, we can tell how congested the roadways are. We could see that the roadways are being less congested, therefore people are speeding, therefore the collisions that, that the commercial vehicles would get into were more severe. And so we were able to uh, help our clients understand that the risks were shifting and the drivers had to take a different pattern to, to be able to reduce their claims. Okay, thank you very much. Neil, um, there was already the mentioning about uh, tracing apps. Um, how do you think that telematics companies look at those tracing apps and do they have really a role to play? Um, you think also coming out of this crisis? Yeah, so it's interesting. I mean, people do value their privacy, right? And contact tracing, you know, as part of the understanding of, of contacts with COVID so that you can trace people's activity and you can help mitigate um, is a big deal. And obviously, many of the vehicles that we talk about today have uh, telematics built into them. And so the question becomes, if we know who the driver is and we've got driver identification, don't we already have some form of contact tracing on the commercial side? And, and absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, the question is, is simply one of not whether we can do it and not even whether the data is available. It's a question of, you know, our willingness to trade and give up the data. And so, you know, for example, if, you know, society turned out to be willing to allow Geotab to provide its data to the authorities to do some form of contact tracing, you know, we, we could obviously do that. Um, but it has to be off the back of everybody agreeing that this is the way that they want to go and what they need to do. Um, you know, I think you need when you do contact tracing, not just to have one form, which is my phone. But we all know that people can track on their phone. But the problem is phones are not very accurate. You know, the, the tracking, the GPS tracking in your phone when you may be doing a route can be turned on to be very accurate. But generally, it's inaccurate, right? It's using cell phone triangulation and Wi-Fi hotspot data. And so you need to supplement it with all these extra sources. So we're ready and able, and I'm sure, you know, the same with 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 um, the other folks, Nicola and Brandon, that we would provide that data to the authorities in the event that it's needed. Mm. Um, you were mentioning, Neil, that you are ready, but now it's also up, let's say, to the community itself, willing to share their data. Um, how can we unblock that situation? Because we can see, let's say, the advantages of sharing the data, but apparently not everyone is ready. So what can we do as an industry to make sure that we are going to share more and more data? Yeah, it's a tough problem to solve because it really boils down to one of trust. I think everybody understands the benefits of contact tracing and the sharing of this data. And, and interestingly enough, this doesn't just apply to contact tracing. This applies to telematics data in general, right? We, we have this, we've, we fight this battle where we know, for example, where the dangerous, where the places are that people speed. But who wants to be the one that's giving up their data so that they can get caught in the speeding trap, right? We know it's better for society that we, we're safer on the roads. So, I mean, I think it's a general problem. And part of the problem is that, you know, contact tracing, the danger comes in with governments, right? I, I thought about this the other day, like you should be able to trust your government. But if you think about it, that's the one, you know, kind of body that really shouldn't have access to this data in the sense of, oh, well, if I know that you are voting for that party and you congregating together and all the visions and nightmares of World War II and kind of, you know, uh, dictatorial control comes out, um, so in a way, you almost have to find a third party that can be absolutely trusted um, to do that. And right now, today, the honest truth is that companies like Google and Apple are de facto those trusted partners. They know everything about what our cell phones do, whether we turn it on or not, um, which is an interesting privacy debate. But I feel like you know, they might, might actually be the best avenues for us to get to some form of contact tracing uh, that way. Okay, um, final question on this topic, how to come out, let's say, of COVID-19 and go into the new normal. We see, of course, that for many businesses, it has been a challenge. Uh, it still is a challenge um, that businesses were down. Uh, Nicola, do you think that in the 
IoT and telematics business, there will be a further consolidation of the market? Well, that sounds really definitely possible, Stephen. Uh, you know, the, the IoT and telematics arena is pretty much fragmented compared with very many other industry segments. So it's something that could occur. In addition to that, uh, as I said, uh, and as uh, the other two guys just said, uh, connectivity is going to become the way it works. It is, it is no longer an option. And if you think about the way that connectivity helps a fleet management company today in terms of efficiency, utilization improvement, uh, so PNL impact, and last but not least, revenue growth, because just the utilization of the keyless solution, for example, is allowing a company in the sharing and in the car rental to be able to be affected 24 seven. While in the old past, you know that there were timing when the office was open between eight to five or whatever. So connectivity is gonna be the enabler to make money in the future in everything that is related to fleet management. So as a matter of fact, it needs to become more and more competitive in terms of pricing. And that's why very likely we will see action that will allow stronger synergy, stronger interaction, that we reduce also the cost and we allow those companies to be able to continuously add value added services in terms of analytics especially that are necessary to make sure that this organization and this connected world will strive toward the success of the future. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the pandemic, ladies and gentlemen, has accelerated the focus on employee well-being. Within this context, fits the recent trend to fleet electrification and also new mobility management. So let's discuss with our experts how connectivity supports smart mobility and fleet electrification. And I know, Neil, cause of Geotap, that you launched in January a sixth pillar within your strategy around sustainability. So the question for you is, going into the new normal, do you expect really an exponential growth in EV adoption and new mobility within multinational companies? Yes, um, we absolutely do expect that to happen. Obviously, there's some very real challenges around electric vehicle adoption. We understand that the fueling takes a very long time. We understand that um, there's range anxiety and people have existing vehicles that they need to take advantage of. And so, you know, our team you know, based in Waterloo that's passionate about electric vehicles, really wants to do everything in their power, you know, from technology point of view to try and help with the adoption. And so the interesting thing that they came up with is they said, listen, we've got to be practical. We're, we, you know, these commercial companies can't switch everything to EV tomorrow. It's not going to happen. So we need to be able to pick and choose which are the best possible vehicles in your organization that can be switched to EVs. And so we bought out, you know, it's a long name, EV suitability assessment, don't, don't worry, but it's really a report which analyzes how you use the vehicles in your fleet. So it'll look at the load that you need to carry, it'll look at the locations of the charging stations, the weather, so how much energy needs for cabin heating and cooling, it'll look at the routes that need to be followed, and then it'll recommend for you the best set of vehicles that should be switched to EVs. And we feel, you know, at Geotab that by picking the right vehicles to change over to EVs, that you have the best possible chance of a successful EV program within your company. And you can accelerate the adoption longer term of EVs. So really trying to, you know, think from a technology point of view, what we can do to help speed up that adoption. Okay. Um, Brandon, um, I would like to see with you a little bit the integration of video telematics for correct EV adoption and EV driver behavior. Because you can, of course, have an EV, but if you don't drive it in the correct way, then probably uh, you will not have the result that is wanted by your company and your fleet manager. Do you think that um, in the future, we will see also video telematics as sort of a lever, an asset to get the right EV driver behavior within our corporate fleets? Yeah, without a doubt. It's, you know, the video telematics applies in, you know, congestion engines as well as electronic engines. 
Um, it's really what it, what's happening here is there's a couple of different trends that are happening at the same time. It's the, the, the EV and the AV and all the technologies that go into that. Um, really what's happening is it's technology being applied to the fleet industry to help them improve the safety, the productivity, the efficiency, the compliance of their fleets. And so, as Neil mentioned, there's a whole side of this, which is EV, that is really, it's not straightforward to adopt, and it's going to take a lot of, of uh, process and, and analytics. Um, the same thing with automated vehicle. It's a really, really hard problem to solve, and it's really based on the visibility that the vehicles have out on the roadways and the ability to apply machine vision and, and other technologies in a way that it really helps the fleet companies solve problems. The fleet companies want to move their vehicles around and move things as efficiently as they, they can. In every boardroom, in, in every fleet company out there, there are piles of money that are sitting there that they can't go after and pull off the board table. Right? They need to be able to reach in there and grab that, and us as technology providers, we're able to help them do that. Okay, so we have now come with the topic of smart mobility, and I would like to address that to Nicola, because you also talked already about shared mobility. So, of course, due to the pandemic, mobility as a service, public transport, shared mobility are on the threat. Can connectivity help to take away the obstacles and improve safety around shared mobility? Yeah, I, I really think so. Actually, I'm more than certain about that. Uh, as I was showing a few minutes ago, everyone is going to be scared for the next few, let's say, months. Nobody knows for how long, but it's probably going to be more than months. Uh, they're going to be scared of taking public transportation for the many reasons that we know. And that's why the telematic solution and the smart technology behind that, so what we call smart telematics, is going to be really the enabler that will allow people to use shared vehicle in a way that is going to be safe. Remember what I was describing, the sanitization process that uh, is going to be available in every car. It's going to be clearly easier because everything will be keyless and everything will be done via an app. And on top of that, that's going to even encourage and reduce what's going to be the pollution level in the world. So if you think about all the various components, it's going to be safer is going to be cheaper and is going to be better for the environment. So definitely everyone, including the government and institution, will try and push into the direction of connectivity because that's the way that will enable the world to be better and will guarantee a better living style. Mm -hmm. Okay. Neil, um, you talked about electrification. We are talking about electrification and mobility. Um, do you think that... Um, Telematics can also be useful to optimize routes for EVs and predict, let's say, the best time and place to charge with probably the availability for public chargers and so on. Where do you think that telematics is today and where need it to go tomorrow? Yes, um, so I do think that we have a big opportunity with telematics and on the EV side, and I'll tell you why. Because right now, the other side of the plug, if you like, is the charger infrastructure. And that charger is built by a whole host of companies, and it's very, very fragmented. We don't really have a lot of control over identifying which vehicles are plugged into which chargers, when, who's authorized to do so. So you have another way of looking at it, and that is from the vehicle point of view. So if you have telematics in the vehicle, and the vehicle can identify where it is when it's charged, it can identify which char type of charger it's plugged into. We have a fantastic opportunity to pull it from the vehicle side and to aggregate the data together and then start exposing, for example, which chargers are not working, which ones are full and we don't have access to, where are the charging locations, which are the high speed chargers versus the low speed chargers. And I think that that is a wonderful opportunity to help speed the adoption of electric vehicles. But it will take 
collaboration from everybody. We need to come together. We don't want to have to rely on the European Union or you know somebody else to force standards and to force us to come and work together. It would be nice if we could all get together and say, let's put this towards the common good to be able to create um, these data sets to make it available to companies to so, so that we can help speed the adoption by showing where people should charge and when they should charge. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's a there's a wonderful opportunity there to do that. Okay, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, of course, we don't have a crystal ball, but with three sharp minds in this panel, it can't be too difficult to predict what the future will be looking like. And for sure, it will be an exciting future with artificial intelligence, autonomous and other new developments that could benefit global fleet management and your fleet. So, Brandon, why is artificial intelligence, and you have already underlined it several times, why is artificial intelligence so important for global fleet management in the future? And why shouldn't we be afraid of the development around artificial intelligence? So we revolutionized video telematics about uh, six years ago when we added machine vision and artificial intelligence to the cameras that were installed in the vehicles. And the reason that was so important was that um, before that, the cameras were just used to capture uh, the video, and then the video is used to, to help the driver get better. When you add machine vision and artificial intelligence directly onto the device at the edge, now that device can actually see. It's not just about capturing the, the video, it's literally that device can see, it can help the driver be better, it can alert manager when certain things happen. So let's say a driver picks up a cell phone. The device can actually see the cell phone, wait for some period of time that's, that's uh, you know, based on what the, the clients want, alert the driver with some escalating you know, response. And then if that driver doesn't respond from those alerts, they can, you know, they can now alert the manager that, hey, you have a driver out there that's got a cell phone in the hand right now going 65 miles an hour down a freeway. Right, that's the way we can make things better. Well, that technology can be applied to anything. And I agree completely with Nicola that the, there is going to be a con continued consolidation in this industry, not only because there's economies of scale to be in the leaders, and you've got the three leaders in, in the global industry on the, on the call here, um, but there's also data economies of scale. So with artificial intelligence, you need mass amount of data to be able to train the algorithms to do what you want them to do. And given we are the leaders, we have the most data, we can train our algorithms to do literally anything a global fleet manager wants to know out at the edge, we can train the algorithms to look at. So do you wanna know if your drivers have food and drink? Do you wanna know if your seat belts are on? Do you wanna know what the congestion on the roadways? Do you wanna know if there's uh, uh, wildlife in the areas? Do you wanna know if there's pedestrians, scooters, red lights, stop signs? All that stuff is visible by the cameras because of the machine vision and artificial intelligence that's installed on them. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nicola, with what Brandon was just mentioning, can't we perhaps say that the evolution in terms of the technology, artificial intelligence, what you are doing as leaders in this field is perhaps a little bit too much and too fast for global fleet managers at the moment. What would be your recommendation to them to keep up with the pace that you are developing your services with? Yeah, what you're saying is exactly right. Also, you know that I'm a little biased in here because I'm coming from that world. So prior to joining Octo, I was working in a car rental company. I was leading a fleet of several hundred thousands of vehicles. And I have to say that uh, it's part of our task. When I'm saying our, I'm talking Brandon, Neil, and mine. We need to educate. The, the, the fleet managers in the world to try and understand what's in it for them with the use of the technology. So very often fleet managers are not in, into the tech side and uh, we have to explain them the value of the technology. We have to explain them how many 
opportunities could be triggered by the use of the technology. And uh, it's not just that they are a little bit behind, it's simply that we didn't do our job properly to educate them in getting up to speed. So this is very much one of our main tasks, and for myself personally, to try and make sure that we spread the knowledge, the capabilities and the opportunities to make sure that all the fleet manager in the world can benefit from this technology as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Neil, uh, in spreading the word, in spreading the knowledge, in making sure that, let's say, the expertise around connectivity is also um, be put into our global community, um, you are of course, already working on the supplier side in an open platform with data consolidation between, let's say, competitors, but you are not seeing that as competitors. Is that the only way forward that we, we need to dare to say, OK, this is not my data, it's our data, and together we can build probably something that is even more exciting and more valuable than just keep it for ourselves? Yes, that's a good point. Um, really, at the end of the day, you've heard people talk about data as the new oil. And I think it's been commented that it shouldn't be thought of that way because oil gets used up and burnt and it's gone, whereas data actually doesn't. I can use the data for a purpose. Uh, you can pass the data on to somebody else and they can use it for another purpose and it just gets stronger each time. The other really interesting thing about data is that data on its own is normally not very useful the more you combine it with other data sets the more compelling and powerful it becomes the more i combine you know what my vehicles are doing for example which customers they're visiting with maybe my internal information about uh, the ARPU of that particular customer or the satisfaction levels of those customers or whatever, the more powerful that data insights is, the more it can open the door. So if you think about the world of where we need to go to, the first thing with, with data that's interesting to me is it's, it's almost like open source software. I don't see that pricing data you know, in, in the long run is going to be an easy task. And I think the value of data is going to come less from selling of data and more from partnering with people to kind of combine data. So that's the first thing. Second thing is with data, open stand has become very important. So we, what we want to be able to do is work with, you know, Nicola and Brandon, and we want to make sure that our big data science teams can work with their teams and we can take data from their systems and our systems to solve a particular customer's problem and if it means that you know they you know customers in europe for example you know using nicholas te telematics or brand's video system that is telling us what's happening about the driver combined with some geotab data that tells us what's happening with the vehicle if we can use all that data together in a compelling way where it's compatible um, i think that the customer is the one that wins and so we need to make sure that customers have the ability to take some of mine, take some of his, take some of somebody else's and mix it all together. And open standards are the key way that we're going to get towards that. And I think that, you know, everybody would agree that we need to, it, it, we have to work hard to make open standards and it is in the long run beneficial for everybody. And so we feel strongly about that. And I'm sure, you know, the, the other two folks do too. Um, and it is uh, open standards will win at the end of the day. Okay. Thank you. Um, what should we expect from the evolution in video telematics for a safer mobility, Brandon. What is on your plate and perhaps also on that of your competitors that we can expect in the upcoming months and years? So the, the uh, video tel telematics is becoming mainstream now. So it's literally, if you don't have a video camera in your fleet, uh, you're missing out as you know in a, a massive opportunity to improve the safety, the productivity, the compliance, you know, and, and then also a bunch of operational type things that are specific to vertical industries. Um, for us, the power of machine vision and artificial intelligence at the edge is unending. And so we're just getting started with the things that the cameras can see. And I, I don't mean the video, I mean the ability to see. And it's on the driver, it's on the context, it's inside the vehicle. And c combining all the information that we're able to do is really insightful. I couldn't agree more with what Neil said, which is you know, combining uh, the data that we have with the machine vision, along with all the data that it's you know, representative of the people on the, on the video here, but also outside third-party information, 
That is really, really powerful. And so the ability to push that forward is gonna be massive for the fleets. Um, the, the things that are really important here is that uh, trust, data security, data privacy has to be taken all the way down to the driver level. And it's gotta be anonymized data if it's made available for anything. And so it can never blow back onto the driver and it's gotta be in control of the fleet and we can never break that trust. Okay, um, Nicola, how do you see the future adoption, let's say, of telematics for fleets? Because talking to fleet managers, there are quite a lot that mention that they will go with the flow, meaning that they will wait until there is a telematics system or a video telematics system or an IoT uh, development system that is installed within the car, by the car manufacturer or another party, but they are not, let's say, really willing to reach out to a third party. How do you see the further adoption of telematics for global fleets? As I said, again, looking at what uh, uh, if you think about the amount of money that a fleet manager today could gain by the use of the technology, you wouldn't wait until the day that everything is uh, coming directly originally equipped by a car manufacturer because actually it's passing you missing over several hundreds of millions of dollars. So definitely, again, this is very much part of what uh, people like the three of us in this uh, video chat uh, needs to do to try and explain the, the value add that telematics can provide because as soon as they discover and understand it clearly, they're not gonna wait even a second. Because coming from my former experience, and of course I cannot quote, I quote any data because it might be confidential, but uh, the impact on the PNL, on the, the real bottom line of the use of the technology is so massive uh, that everyone should start embarking on that as soon as they will understand it. But can you give like a sort of a, a fork, let's say? Uh, what can we expect in terms of the economies of scale that you can reach with uh, and the ROI that you can have uh, when you adopt telematics for your global fleet? Well, let's say that, uh, let's talk about the generic 250,000 uh, vehicles, uh, fleet manager, by the usage of telematics could easily bring in on the PNL on a yearly basis, $150 million just to give you a specific order of magnitude. That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about in terms of P&L opportunities straight on the bottom line. Okay. Do you agree, Brandon, that it can be such a huge amount? It's, it, it's a, just a massive amount and it's, and it's shocking that, that some haven't adopted it already because it is such a powerful tool to be able to manage your fleet. To give you some stats on the, on the video safety side, uh, by installing the, the video system, the MBAI system that, that Lytx has, we can drop claims cost anywhere from 50 to 90%. So literally adopt the program and within six months, the claims costs have come down, you know, almost 100% of the feet. And you think about all the dollars, whether they're small fleets that are, you know, have insurance premiums or whether it's larger fleets that are self-insured, all that money comes back to them and goes straight to their bottom line. Uh, Neil, um, I remember that you mentioned um, in the conference that I attended in the beginning of the year organized by your company that looking a little bit further, and you mentioned it also here, I think, that it's difficult to uh, secure the pricing of the data, but there you mentioned that it could even be that in the future, perhaps, let's say, the connected solutions could become free of charge in the future. Are you really convinced about that and can you briefly explain what you mean with that sure so today if you uh use email if you go back 10 years you had to pay for your email and then gmail and hotmail came out and everybody had free email um, and at some point the email service was then upgradable to give you extra features and functionality and i very very much expect that that is happening already and it's starting to happen and will eventually maybe in five years time be the way. Uh, I expect that in five years you will be able to get a basic telematic service for absolutely free and, and why? A couple of reasons. So one is 
uh, remember that the automakers are connecting their vehicles. So every new vehicle being sold today is coming connected. Now, the automakers will charge a company like Geotab or Octo um, to uh, access the data, and they'll charge us a fee where we can pull the data. But the point is, they are connected anyway. So they are receiving the data for their own purposes to build better vehicles. So it is a sunk cost and it is there, All right? That's the first thing. Second thing is the processing costs for all the stuff are dropping enormously. Um, even today, you know, it's not very expensive to actually run a telematic system. So the natural evolution of this in a competitive sense is that you will be able to get this free service, which will give you some basic data and will kind of show you the art of the possible. And then we expect um, the upsell opportunities to offer some more advanced analytics and extra services on top of it. And some of that will be paid for by the value of the data. Now, I absolutely concur with, with Brandon when he said earlier that privacy and respect for people's data is critical. You cannot be using telematics and find that that in any way prejudices you, you know, somewhere in the future. You know, the data goes to your competitor or it's used to harm you in some way. And we really believe that. But there is so much good if you are careful and diligent about data. There's so much good that can come from building smart cities of the future from building better roads, from making pedestrian intersections safer, from making our cars safer, from making our, our whole uh, economic system more productive, that we cannot afford not to use this data and collaborate on this data. And that data is going to be valuable. If you can change economies and improve, you know, even by, by three or four percent, the way that fleets operate, that is billions, tens of billions of dollars in the international economy. And so that is worth a lot of money. And that money must return in some way, shape or form to the people that are buying the vehicles. And so I would expect some kind of freemium model ultimately to happen on, on that side. OK, thank you very much. Um, Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for this engaging discussion and this panel discussion. Nicola Veratelli, CEO of Octo, Neil Kors of Geotap and Brandon Nixon of Litix. Thank you for your presence and your commitment. It was a pleasure hosting this panel and I'm sure that also our audience has received extremely valuable insights. And you, ladies and gentlemen, watching this discussion, I invite you to rate this session, give your feedback in our event app, Attendify, where you can also see what's on our agenda for next week, and you see it on the screen. And of course, thank you to our experts and to our diamond sponsor, Octo Group, who supports us for this particular session. It was a pleasure being your moderator, and I wish you a safe and healthy global fleet journey. Bye-bye.